Okay. Yeah, we had some technical difficulties. And um, we've been having, we got a new camera, and it keeps not acting right. Yep, keeps freezing up on us. Why? Don't don't know. Don't know. Don't, don't know why. But we gotta figure it out. So, some all you do, they gonna have to give us our money back. That's just all it is to it. Now let let's let's uh, get into this one. We're gonna talk about Pastor Cheryl because you know uh, we we were saying that this coming Friday will be the actual anniversary or birth date date. Uh, for a New Covenant Christian Church. We started February the 5th, 1995, 10 o'clock in the morning at the, uh, what was the name of the hotel? Was it the, Mad the uh, Radisson? Radisson Hotel over by Hobby Airport. And um, so, you know, here's the thing that I, I, I love about celebrating our church anniversary, Pastor Cheryl, is that, you know, when we started the, the church, when we left St. Agnes to get this church started, there were a lot of people who didn't think that we would be able to last. Oh, yeah. They said that, oh, they'd be back in six months. You know that Heinz, he's not a builder. He doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, he'll be back, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, I, I'm so grateful to the Lord that God has kept us, that he's blessed us all these years. And uh, we have, we have, you know, by the grace of God and by his blessings upon our lives, he has kept us for 20, it'll be 26 years on this Friday. Yeah. And, and we are still going strong, still going strong. And it's been a walk of faith. We have had to walk by faith. We've had to trust God, you know, for uh, the last 26 years. And and it hasn't been. No, we start trusting God way right before. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm talking about you know for the church. You know, for us, we started oh, yeah. when we got married. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You see her running to that camera. I know, I know. Our, our little dog is so busy, y'all. But you know, let's kind of get into that. Let's talk about that for a little bit, because you know, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing about um, when New Covenant was birthed into my spirit. And now, I got saved in 1985, January of 1985. And, uh, of course, we were at the St. Agnes Baptist Church under Apostle Gene A. Moore. And I got saved there, got filled with the Holy Ghost there. And in 1987, August 23rd, 1987, I submitted to the call of God on all my life to preach the gospel. And so... Uh, this coming August, it'll be, what, maybe some 33 years, I guess. 33 years preaching. And uh, can you believe that? Yeah, yeah, because you started when you were 27. Yeah, right? 33 years preaching. Yeah. And uh, and so, you know, um, but, you know, Pastor Cheryl, that was something. And, and listen, we were sitting under a man of God who taught us to walk by faith who, I mean, blessed us, absolutely changed our lives. And, and I'm truly grateful to him for the word that he sowed into us all those 10 years that we were there. And even since we've been gone, I still, as a matter of fact, I had a chance to tune in to him today. And uh, every chance that I get to tune in to listen to my pastor, my spiritual dad, I'll, I'll make sure that I do that. And, um, and here's the thing about it, however. Uh, last week, I was on with him a couple of days for Faith Explosion. And this is the conference, as you know, that uh, the apostle would do every year. And he would bring in awesome speakers to speak into our lives, the message of faith. But there's one preacher that, and there was so many that I enjoyed, so many that, I mean, I, I just thoroughly enjoyed all practically all of the preachers. First night that I ever went, uh, Jesse DePlanis was preaching, and and I had never been exposed to nothing like I was exposed to that night. I remember you went to Donnie, didn't you? Yeah, sure did, sure did. Mm -hmm. And and it was amazing. It was an awesome time that I had uh, hearing Jesse DePlanis, hearing, uh, seeing rather how God was using him. 
and how um, God was using him in the gifts of the spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, you know, prophetic word, casting out devils and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, wow, I had never seen nothing like that before in my life. Mm -hmm. And all I knew was I wanted some of that. Mm -hmm. I wanted God to use me like that. So, you know, um, that and it, that night that I went, it was the last night of Faith Explosion. Yeah. And uh, I, then I couldn't help but think, I wish I had come the other nights. But it was so good to me. It blessed me. And from then on, I never missed another, another faith explosion. I don't even think we missed any since we've been gone. And uh, so, but I tell you what, in 1990, 1990, I believe it was, yes. It was on a Thursday night, Thursday night, 1990. Uh, Pastor Moore brought in Dr. Miles Monroe. Of course, now he's... He's a late Dr. Miles Monroe from the Bahamas. And this man preached for three hours that night. And nobody moved. Nobody <laughs> moved. Nobody wanted to move. Nobody wanted him to stop when he stopped. And he preached a message entitled The Power of Purpose. And if I tell you, Cheryl, that message absolutely changed know, my life, I, man. When you said, woo. I knew he was going to say he's going to talk about Miles Monroe. Yeah, yeah. That, sure that was. I love him some Miles Monroe. Absolutely. But he, not, not only was Miles Monroe a good preacher. Yeah. A good author. Yes, absolutely. But he was a better person. Absolutely. You absolutely. know, because we met him, I think we went in Hawaii. In Hawaii, when yeah. We went to the, and you know, sometimes some of these pastors ain't so nice, y'all. Yep. Yeah. But he was always kind yeah. and welcoming. Very kind. And, mm -hmm. you know, because when you become famous, mm -hmm. you know, you have to realize why you are famous mm -hmm. and who made you famous. Mm -hmm. And part of the a reason why you're famous is because people like your teaching. Yep, yep. And you ought to be nice to people. Absolutely. And they like the books, too. Yeah, they like your You, you know, want folk to buy your books, books, you ought to be nice. Yeah, you ought to be nice. But <laughs> yeah. Everybody ain't nice. That's true. That's true. But Dr. Monroe was very nice. Very nice, man. We got a chance to chat with him uh, when we met him in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was so overwhelmed meeting him that I couldn't even get the words out of my <laughs> mouth. Cheryl had to talk for me. She had to tell Dr. Monroe, my husband uh, wanted to tell you that because of your message, you absolutely changed his life. You blessed him so much. And, and I had to say, yeah, that's right. Cheryl talks to you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she ain't scared to talk to nobody. Mm -mm. And, uh, but it was, it was such a blessing meeting him and talking with him that night. And, uh, but that message, it, it, it turned something on inside. Mm -hmm. And it was the message that I had been waiting on, I believe, all of my life. And it helped me to understand what I am doing now. Mm -hmm. And to understand that God had a plan and a purpose specifically for Bill Hines. Mm -hmm. God is a God of purpose. And um, everything that God does, he does it with and for purpose. The only problem with that is that every purpose is not known. When you don't know the purpose of the thing, you'll abuse the thing. And if you want to know the purpose of something, don't ask the thing. Ask the person who created the thing because purpose is only found in the mind of the creator of the thing. Woo! Man, those are just faith, pr principles of, uh, of uh, purpose that he taught that night that just, man. It just, it just changed me. Yeah. And uh, so, so I knew then that God had called me to be a pastor. And, uh, you know, I remember going to Apostle Moore and letting him know that I knew that God had called me to be a pastor. But the thing that I didn't know was when it was time for me to leave and become a pastor. I knew it wasn't time right then. And this is a mistake that, you know, a lot of times young preachers make. 
you just started preaching, and now you you believe you're supposed to be a pastor. And you go pastor. Yeah, and you go try to pastor folk. And and that's not how this thing works. You know, um, Apostle Moore, I, I'm so grateful to him. You know, even to this day, he took me under his wing. Yeah, I, I believe. Well, no, I don't believe. I know that he knew that God had his hands on me to be your pastor because yeah. he groomed you. Yes, he did. He really yes, took he did. time out with you. Yes, yes. And um, and I will forever be grateful yeah. for that. Me too. Because he he really did. He, he let you do things that, and you were young. Yeah. You yeah. were not, yeah. you know. I was a young man. You were yeah. young. Yeah. You were in your 20s. Yep. Yeah. And he, but he knew that he could trust you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the thing about it is. And Bishop, I remember when we left, oh my God, that day, mm -hmm. that Sunday, when our last Sunday there, mm -hmm. it was so Oh yeah, it was so beautiful. It yeah. was, I mean, you yeah. know, the, the, you know, he got up after he got through preaching, and he said, "Well, I got an announcement to make." Mm -hmm. And he said, "This is Pastor Hines' last Sunday. Mm -hmm. He and his wife mm -hmm. will be leaving to start their own church." Mm -hmm. And he said something I will never forget. Mm -hmm. And he said, "He has served me well." And you know, oh, people were, you know, people were crying, yeah. you know, crying because they were happy for us, but they were going to miss us. And mm -hmm. they loved us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we loved them. And, and still do. And we still do. The, the feeling is mutual. We absolutely love yeah. our St. Agnes family. Yes. And when you go back to St. Agnes, it's just like you're going back home. Oh, yes. You know, family reunion. Yes. Yeah. And I love it, man. And, you know, you know the people love you. And that's a blessing. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's not always like that. And I told Apostle Moore, I told him when God told me that uh, I was supposed to be a pastor. I told him that when it was time for me to leave, that I wanted to leave right. Yes, exactly. And I wanted his blessings when I did. And I didn't want to leave there with him angry and upset with me, you know, because I needed him. Yes. I needed that relationship with him. I needed a spiritual father. Yeah. And and that's been 26 years ago. It'll be 26 years this Friday, and he is still my spiritual father. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this. There have been people who have asked me, you still with him? You still under him? Yeah, you absolutely right. I'm yeah. still under my spiritual father. I'm still under my pastor. That's my man of God. God used him to get me saved, to show me how to be saved. And he used Apostle Gene A. Moore to change my life. Yeah. And my loyalty as a son will always be to him. Yeah. And, you know, I don't have any other spiritual father. And, and there are a lot of young preachers who make the mistake of hopping over here and hopping over there and hopping over here. And, and trying to make all these different people their spiritual father. No, I have one. Yeah. And that's Apostle Gene A. Moore. Yeah. And um, he has been my spiritual father for 36 years now. Yeah. And, um, and I, I'm not going to change that. I'm not. I won't. I'll never change that. Apostle Gene A. Moore is my spiritual father. And I'm truly grateful to God to have him uh, to be so. Yeah, he taught us to walk by faith. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He taught us to walk by faith. Yes, he I, did. I remember, you know, the first time that we went there, mm -hmm. I set foot in that church, and that church had a different spirit than yeah. what I was used to. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a loving, kind spirit, Yeah. Uh, nice people. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go to a church, people ought to speak to you. Absolutely. And they ought to act like they're happy to see you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That you chose that place to come and worship. Absolutely. You could have gone anywhere. You could have gone anywhere. But you, go, you went there. You chose that place to worship. Yeah. And people should treat you, you know, with kindness yeah. and thankfulness because yeah. you could have gone anywhere. Because you don't know what people have are going through. You don't know what people are facing. Absolutely. And you come to church seeking answers from God. Yep. 
Yep. What people don't come to church for yeah. is to be treated nasty Absolutely. and ugly. Absolutely. That's what they don't come to church Absolutely. for. Absolutely. And so St. Agnes has always had a beautiful spirit yeah. Of, yeah. of saying hello to people when you walk in that, that building. Absolutely. And you, they always had a spirit of acceptance and loving. Yeah. Absolutely. Loving spirit. Absolutely. And I and that's what Bishop and I try to convey at New Covenant. That Absolutely. you're welcome. Absolutely. You're to welcome to come to New Covenant and worship with yeah. us. Be a part of our family. Yeah. And and we, we receive you with open arms. And I want to talk about this now. Because see, this is something that a lot of people I don't think get, you know, when it comes to ministry. You know, it was because of Apostle Gene A. Moore's vision to start St. Agnes, mm -hmm. that you and I and thousands of other people mm -hmm. have come through St. Agnes, got saved. Mm -hmm. That's just one part of it. Okay. Um, another part is so many people's lives have been changed because of that. Yeah. Now. This man changed oh my God. thousands and th tens of thousands of my Absolutely. on TV. Absolutely. Uh, millions. Mm -hmm. Millions. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's still doing so. Yeah. It's still doing so. And here's the thing about it, though, and, and, and I don't ever want us to forget this, is the children who went through the St. Agnes Christian Academy. Most, Our son is one of them. Most of those children are college graduates. Absolutely. And that, Absolutely. that's a Man, that legacy. says a lot. Yeah, that says a lot. Woo! I mean, that says have, a lot. Um, we have Jennifer... Grew up at our church. And yeah. Randy. Yeah. Uh, Randy Askew, Randy Jennifer Askew Gooden. And still there. Yep. They have both become attorneys. Attorneys, he, yes. He, that school produced quite a bit of attorneys. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just a, a lot of them just uh, did, you know, branched off into different things. But mm -hmm. most of those children that went there yeah. went on to higher education. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and and like you said, that's a legacy, man. Mm -hmm. That is a legacy. So many young people's lives are better yeah. because of what they received at the St. Agnes Christian Academy. Bishop, a child's mind is a blank canvas. Absolutely. And what we put on that blank canvas mm -hmm. is what that child is going to have. Absolutely. Through adulthood. Absolutely. And I have seen... Oh my God! You know, I, I was um, looking at that documentary mm -hmm. about this housing project in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and the mindset and mm -hmm. the culture mm -hmm. of of some of those people. Yeah, they were just happy to have a place to stay, yeah. and they didn't want to go any further. Right. Yeah. But there are some people mm -hmm. who knew that it was in them to do better. Absolutely, yeah. And they wanted to do better. Yeah. But the system kept pulling them back. Pulling them back, yeah. So yeah. they wouldn't do better. Absolutely. But they, some of them fought their way out of that. Yeah. But there were generations, mm -hmm. generation after generation after mm -hmm. generation yeah. that stayed in the project. Right. But see, this is one thing that I love about church. Yeah. And the talk word about. of God. Yeah, talk about it. See, you can, you can live in those projects. You can be raised in those projects. Mm -hmm. But the projects doesn't have to be in and you. And you, right. And I know that. Now, I wasn't raised in the projects. You know, I come from a working class family. Mm -hmm. uh, raised with both my parents, my mother and my father in the mm -hmm. same house. They were working people. Mm -hmm. And they got up and they went to work every day. And my father stressed work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at at 13 years old, I started making money, mm -hmm. babysitting. So mm -hmm. I've always had a job. Mm -hmm. And I am the type of woman, I'm going to work. I'm mm -hmm. not a stay-at-home type of mother. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. you know, no offense to stay-at-home mothers because that's a hard job. Mm -hmm. It drove me crazy. That's why I couldn't do it. Okay, my hat's off to the woman. 
who can stay at home it's working. and raise children, mm -hmm. but you working 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> then you don't have no adult conversation because yeah. you got your little children with you. <laughs> but my hat's off to the working woman. But for me, I did not want to be a stay at home mom. Right. Because the way my father raised right. us. Right. Yeah. yeah. But poverty is a mentality. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know that you can do better, yeah. you will never do better. And a good church yeah. will get you to tap in to what you can do. Absolutely. I we have we've had so many people mm -hmm. who have come to New Covenant mm -hmm. and their lives were not mm -hmm. all that great mm -hmm. and now they're living a good life. Glory. Your cousin Randy, I remember. I'll just Randy think about Randy. Think about Randy. Yeah. Randy is a testimony. Powerful testimony. Powerful. Powerful testimony. I'm so proud of you, Randy Jackson. You just don't know, man, how God has blessed your life, and He has done some great things in your life. And I'm just proud of you, man, because I remember, you know, we talk about this from time to time. <laughs> you know, when we were over on Fuquay, I used to call Randy. And, you know, and invite him to come to church. And, you know, I have to call him on a Sunday morning sometime. Randy, you coming to church? Mm -hmm. You know, and I know Randy didn't want to be bothered with me. But, you know, Randy got up. <laughs> Randy came on yeah, to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and did miss. And did not miss. And, and not hasn't miss. missed in all these years. No. And, you know, from where God brought Randy from from the life that he was living back in the day to where he is now. I'm so proud of this brother. Yeah. And Randy, Randy is a car salesman. He's a top car salesman. Top car salesman. And not only I that. Mean, Randy used to sell CDs out of his car. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, <laughs> CDs and boudins. Yeah, And yeah. the man that he was would sell that, uh, Boudin too. Yeah. Asked the man, you a salesman. Why don't you come work for me? And, that's and Randy has become the top salesman yeah. at that car dealership. That's something, man. That is really something. Yes. And here's what I love too about Randy. That because God has blessed him so good that, you know, Randy got married and everything, mm -hmm. got him a wife, yeah, yeah sister Nedra, our daycare director. Yeah. And 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 bought her a Mercedes Benz. Yeah. Come I on, mean, somebody. God has really blessed. Yes. Their lives. Absolutely. And bought them a brand new house. house. God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. Look at where God has brought you from. And 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 here's the thing. Here's, I think, the key to a lot of this. Randy sat down under the word. He learned everything he could learn and still learning everything he can learn and applied what he has yeah. learned over a period of time. Randy has grown. And, you know, what he was doing in the past, God delivered him from that, you know, and now he, um, he's doing great. He's preaching, you know, preach of the gospel. Come on here, somebody. We're talking about Randy Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> preach of the gospel. And not only that, but, you know, God is good, yeah. you know. And let me say this here. Mm -hmm. It's, see, now, when I say this, I'm not trying to be messy. Mm -hmm. But see, sometimes people can talk you out of your wealthy place. Absolutely. They could talk you away from your wealthy place. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And people will try to talk us away from St. Agnes. Yes. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. That that was our wealthy place. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> that was our place called that. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember uh, Apostle uh preached that message. Preached that. A place, place called place there. Place called that. Yeah. Everybody has a place called there. Mm -hmm. And you cannot let people talk you out of yeah. your place called there. Absolutely. I know that sometimes when people leave their place called there, mm -hmm. their lives just crumble yeah. and fall apart. Absolutely. Why? Because they left the wealthy place. Absolutely. They left the place where God was going to water them. Yep. Yeah plant them yep. and grow them. Absolutely. But they let somebody get in their head. Yep. And this is biblical because let me tell you something. When sisters and brothers, when Adam and Eve was in the garden, mm -hmm. everything was lovely for mm -hmm. them. Everything, they had everything that they needed mm -hmm. to last them 
all throughout eternity. Mm -hmm. Because God had had a plan for man to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On earth. Mm -hmm. But when she got to listening to mm -hmm. that serpent. Yes. He talked her out of her wealthy place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They got kicked out of their wealthy yes, place. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. You can be happy in your wealthy place. Mm -hmm. And then somebody can come along and whisper in your ear. Mm -hmm. Just like Satan whispered in in Eve's ear. Mm -hmm. And he told her, God don't want you to be like him. Mm -hmm. She hadn't even, she probably hadn't even noticed that tree. Right. Because that tree was set aside for God. Yep. Yeah. And anytime we we mess with what God has set aside from him for himself, mm -hmm. himself, mm -hmm. we will get in trouble. Absolutely. Every time. But they got kicked out of their wealthy place. Yep. yep. Because they listened. Absolutely. Both of them did. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> and so, you know, and I've seen people leave their wealthy place and not necessarily leaving New Covenant. Other places, other places where God has planted you and you were supposed to be there under that, under that leadership, but you left there and their lives fell apart. Marriages fell apart. Uh, businesses, jobs, all that kind of stuff. When God has planted you in a place, Stay in the place that God has planted you until God tells you it's time to leave. Mm -hmm. I didn't leave St. Agnes until God said, okay, son, it's time for you to leave. Yeah. It's time for you to start. And so, and let me say this. Let me just throw this in real quickly because we started New Covenant. Every pastor is not a pioneer pastor. Mm -hmm. um, there are some pastors who will go and take over a vacant pulpit in a church. But we're pa pioneer pastors. God called us to start this work, and we that's did, what we've done. We didn't have nothing. Showed it. All we had was a vision. Yeah. Just a vision. St. Agnes raised uh, a what, start about 5,000? Yeah, 5, about 5,000. To start up with. Yep. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's what we had. Yep. Yeah. In a, in a, we didn't have a, promise, a building to meet in. But we had a promise a promise from God. from God. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's all we had. We had a vision. We had a promise from God. And five. $5,000. Didn't have a place to meet. You know, we met in the uh, didn't, hotel. Didn't have no sound equipment. Didn't have no, uh, oh, uh, no chairs. No, no, no chairs, no musical equipment. Yeah. Didn't have nothing. Oh, my God. The, what, we went and bought a, a little Casio keyboard from, uh, it, it really a little toy keyboard from Radio Shack. And then I bought some little uh, Radio Shack. We did what we microphone. Did. We did the best we, we did could with what we had. What did all? Sam God. Uh, Take uh, what you got. A Lewis start Tyson. where you are. And do what you can. Yes, and that's what we did. <laughs> that's what See, we did. That's what the Word of God will do for you. Absolutely. When you sit up under it, yeah. you hear these resounding yes. messages from these great pastors, Absolutely. and God is speaking to you because you're gonna need that word one day. Absolutely. And we Absolutely. took what we we started where we were. Yeah. Took what we had and did, and what, did we what we could, and still doing it. Still doing it. Twenty six years later, yes. God has been good. Yes. God has been good. And and I want to say this, you know, um, a lot of times people think because I want to I want to deal with this piece too, Pastor Cheryl, because. You know, um, a lot of times people think that pastors, you know, um, when you're preaching the word of God, you're all up in their business, <laughs> you know, you focusing on them and all that. And, and it's never like that. It's never like that. Um, when I study the word, I don't have folk in mind. I'm going to preach on Brother So-and-so this time. I'm going to get him. It's not like that. Oh, I'm going to get such and so-and-so this Sunday. It's not like that. You know, when God gives you a message, and the way God deals with me is he gives me series of messages. And that's the way I like because I'm a pastor. And instead of coming once, you know, every Sunday, brother, and, and hopping all over here and over there, this Sunday I'm on this, this next Sunday I'm on that, next, uh, no, 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 in a series. A series can break down yeah. everything that you need, what God Absolutely. is saying Absolutely. about this situation. Yeah. But when you preach something once, 
Mm-hmm. You preach over here this Sunday and you preach over there. Yeah. Well, you never get the full text. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or the full chapter Absolutely. of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I remember when you did a whole series series on David. Yeah. Well, David is one of my yeah. one of my favorite characters yeah. in the Bible. Mine too. But Jeremiah's my my mm. absolute favorite. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. Uh, he's a a, a a prophet that's less preached. I mean, we use I you know before I knew you, God before mm-hmm. God. Uh, God formed us. He knew us before. Right, he formed us in the womb. You know, we talk about that, but you know, we, you know, Jeremiah was an awesome prophet. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And and and, but listen, when you taught on David, David was anointed to be king when he was around about fourteen years old Mm -hmm. to be king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And you say that when you announce your calling as a pastor, you didn't. I mean, when you told Apostle that you think mm-hmm. that you were called, that you felt like you were called a pastor. I knew I was called. Yeah. You knew you were called a pastor. Mm-hmm. You didn't go out and leave and start pastoring. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Just like David didn't either. That's right. He he was anointed king, mm-hmm. but he had to still go tend to them sheep. Exactly. As his brother told him, those few little sheep. Yeah, yeah. But what. <laughs> Those few little sheep did yeah. for David yeah. was to talk David was to teach David how to shepherd, shepherd God's, God's people. people. Exactly. exactly. When he became king. Absolutely. Because he a shepherd has to care yeah. for the flock. Yeah. He has to anoint his the sheep yeah. head with oil yeah. so the gnats won't get won't get in his nose and crawl up in his brain and lay eggs and yep. drive the sheep crazy and yes, kill it. Yes. A shepherd cares for his flock. Absolutely. And Bishop, I have seen how you care for your flock Absolutely. over the years. Absolutely. And Bishop Jake said something that was profound. Mm-hmm. Profound. Mm-hmm. Because we go to a lot of his leadership meetings. Mm-hmm. He said, don't apply for this job if you don't want to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to be a people person. That's right. To do this. You're job. exactly right. You're exactly right. You know, if, if you don't love people, if you cannot care for people, then you don't need to be pastoring people. Mm-hmm. Because pastoring means that you are in the people business and you have to care about people. Now let me say this, Pastor Cheryl, when when a person leaves underneath from underneath your care. Mm-hmm. And they go and they join another church or they are, they are under another man's care, another woman's care, what have you, then I'm no longer that pastor. Mm -hmm. Uh, That person is. And so it would be out of order for me to still try to pastor them and care for them and do things for them and be overly concerned about them when I have the rest yeah. of the people that God has has put under my care to be concerned about. Yes. And so, you know, the thing about it is there are people who leave churches and they go to other churches and they join other churches. And so I'm no longer their pastor. No, but that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you don't Absolutely. You still, still care love. about them. Yeah, you still love them. You, you still, still care about them. I think a lot of times, Bishop, pastors get angry mm-hmm. because people leave. Right. And this is what I have learned, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, we've been through that. Yeah. You know, and sometimes it's a hurting feeling. Yeah. But sometimes some of these people, they need to leave. Mm-hmm. They're number trouble mm-hmm. But, you know, I have learned that God has no shortage of people. Absolutely. And that yeah. that you have to stop lashing out yeah. and being angry about people Absolutely. that left. Absolutely. And be thankful for what remains. Absolutely. You have to do that. And you have and to. the and the people that remain, you have to still minister to Absolutely. them. Absolutely. And if, if you're so upset over what left, then you'll neglect what remains. Yeah. And I want to care for what remains. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Well, before we run out of time, I want to I want to cover this piece too. And this is a piece of of leading by example. And and I don't want to 
I want to throw this part in here because this is so important. I, I think for particularly younger pastors to get this. If any are watching, may see it later on. But, you know, if you're going to lead people, you need to lead by example. Mm -hmm. And I don't ask people to do things that I'm unwilling to oh, do yes, myself. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to ask you to... I'm not going to ask you to clean up yeah. if I'm not willing to clean up myself. Absolutely. You know, Bishop and I, we started cleaning up. Yeah. You know, we would clean up the... Mm -hmm. We would go off to the church and yep. clean up, and then all the people found out we was cleaning up, and they say, "No, no, y'all don't have to do that. No, I don't have to do that." I mean, we didn't even think. We didn't even think about we it. We just knew we, we had did, church we that day. Yeah, we needed to clean up. And still do. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you know, after funerals, you know, people tell me, "But sure, you don't have to." You don't have to vacuum. I said, no, no, no. I, I don't mind. Yeah. I, I'm not too good to pick up a broom, pick up a mop. Absolutely. Pick up a vacuum cleaner. And yeah. we have some great people. Let me tell y'all Absolutely. Something. We have some. We have been blessed. Yeah. And we miss you all so much. Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. my God. And yeah. I know the children that we haven't seen in a long time, I yeah. know they're going to be tall. Yeah. Yeah. And they're gonna be have grown up, and I just hate that we're missing some of their, you know, yeah. activities. Absolutely. And we're missing this season in their life, yeah. turning into young adults. Oh, but you know, we love the ministry. Yeah. We love serving God's people. Absolutely. And I was talking to my mother today, and you know, I was telling her that. Uh, that Pastor Booker died, but mm -hmm. he had retired. But I told him, I said, but mom, you really don't retire from this. Yeah. yeah. Because when you love God, you love God's yeah. people, you don't really want to retire. You're from right. This. You're exactly right. Yeah. Exactly yeah. right. Um, you know, and, and I'm gonna say this part and then we're gonna close it out for the night. Um I know because when we talk about leading by example. When we, when we um, do things like when we do our fundraisers that we've done over the years and uh, so that we could attack debt in our church, you know, uh, first thing we did, we paid off our daycare. Yeah. And um, Pastor Cheryl and I, we remember when we would do the, for our church anniversaries, we would do the, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel and and the 12 apostles, yeah. and I would be over the 745 group, you'd be over the 1045, and we asked each group, you know, each captain rather in their group to raise a thousand dollars, I believe it was. Yeah. And then you and I would lead, and but there were times when you would give five thousand mm -hmm. and I would give five thousand from our personal. Money. Yeah, we didn't ask for nothing that we wasn't willing to do for us. Absolutely. And, and you know, God just opened up the hearts of people. Absolutely. And, and y'all, we worked together and yeah. we got our all of our buildings paid off. Absolutely. And that Building was property. Blessing. Yeah. And and so now we are a debt free church. And you know, COVID has really I don't you know, the giving the giving has gone down. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the good thing is that we don't have a mortgage. Absolutely. And I, I just... Absolutely. Ooh, I, for the brothers that have a mortgage, yeah. my prayers are with you. Absolutely. Because, you know, it's, it's tough. I, I know across the board there may be some who haven't experienced, you know, their uh, funds going down, you know, people. Because, you know, you have people that have been laid off jobs. Yeah. You know, you have people who are just tightening up because, you know, and, but uh, there are some who I've, I've heard say, well, we haven't lost anything. As a matter of fact, we're doing better. That's great. You know, God bless y'all, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, but uh, because of COVID and it's going on, it'll be a year. This is February, it'll be here next, next month, that, the I end of next have, month. I was upset because they were talking about, well, we may not be able to go back to church until June. Yeah. I was upset about that. And look and, at and that this. Was last year. That was last year. Yeah. And now, look, we're almost a year into this thing. It'll yeah. be a year next month on yeah. the third Sunday that we have have not had service. Absolutely. A third Absolutely. Sunday in March was our last. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, but you know what? I'm going to tell y'all something. I'd rather this here. I'd rather be doing the service like we're doing now yeah. than for anybody to come in that church with COVID and some of our members die. Yeah. That would be devastating Absolutely. To me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, um, we try to lead by example. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I want people to know this, that when I talk about leading by example, I love this woman right here. This is my wife. And we'll be married, what, 39 years? 39. Again? Oh, my God. Yeah, 39, 39 years. 39 years. And try to set a good example of marriage, family, you know. We, we're not perfect people. Mm -hmm. You know, we make oh, our no. mistakes. And she get on my nerve, I get on her nerve. BJ get on our nerves. Yeah. And we I'm sure we get on his nerves, sometimes. especially because of COVID. But, uh, you know, we but we love each other and we're committed to one another. And so, you know, that's that's what it's like, man, you know, in marriage and in family. you it, It's about commitment. I think sometimes when you, people give up on their marriage too soon. Yeah, yeah. That they, you know, they don't know how to fight through the hard times. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and you have to be willing to put the work in. Yeah. And that's what I tell a lot of people. You have to be willing to put the work in. And we put the work in. You know, I, we I, still do. One, I, I miss Carolyn in so many ways, but this is one way that I miss her. Because, you know, Carolyn, Pam, Pam was not married. Mm -hmm. and, but Carolyn, you know, she was married. And so when, when I would get into a conflict with him, she would be my sounding board. <laughs> oh, you go talk and about And so that. then, when she would get a conflict with her husband, <laughs> I would be her sounding board. <laughs> and we balanced each other out. And, you know, because uh, a sister want to do something, but she bad. But, my, <laughs> but Carolyn was the, you know, she was, well, she was my voice of reason. And she would <laughs> level me out. And, you know, and I was her voice of reason. <laughs> And level her out, and I would say, uh, "Don't say that. Don't, don't, don't do it like that." And she would tell me, "Now I'm gonna tell you like you tell me. Don't say that, and don't do him like that." I want to know what you were no, saying. No, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what were you saying, Cheryl Hines? <laughs> some things you just gonna have to touch. I'm gonna take you my grave. Uh, might be better off. Might yes. be better off. Yes. Amen. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. and um, Yeah, but we just wanted to reminisce with you guys. I know some of you all been with us for ooh, years. Ooh, man. For years. My God, Leo Whitaker and his family. Woods. Dana Woods mm -hmm. and Denise Woods mm -hmm. and That's Dustin. Right. We saw you in on the, the In the white building. Yeah, in the white in building. The white yeah, building. yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo. So we oh. had, you know, God has, he has blessed us. New Covenant, you have been a blessing yes, to the have. body of Christ. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. And so it has been a pleasure pastoring you all. Yes. And I know BJ is very thankful. Mm -hmm. You know, when BJ was a little boy, I used to tell him, speak to these people, BJ. Speak to them. <laughs> Say hello. Be kind. Be nice. <laughs> because, you know, BJ was really shy and he didn't like to speak. To, you know, he, 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 he was just shy. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling these people are the reason why we can do what we do. Mm -hmm. And so it was, you know, I think if more pastors did their children like that and and not let them get away, and BJ didn't get away with nothing. Mm -hmm. He got his behind. Okay. Mm -hmm. He don't like me talking. <laughs> okay. But he's turned out to be a good young man. He's grateful to New Covenant. Amen. And he's a product of the St. Agnes Christian Academy. As yes, we mentioned yes, earlier. Yes. Glory to God. Well, let me do this. Let me do this. I want to pray for someone tonight who may not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you die tonight, if you die tomorrow, you're uncertain of your eternal destiny. I want to give you an opportunity to be saved and to know that you're saved. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is not righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 say that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, 
you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved because we're good people. We're not saved because we get it right all the time. We're saved because God loved us. He sent Jesus to die for us. And on the third day, he raised him from the dead, and he has seated him at his own right hand. And if you listen to us tonight and you want to be saved, then I want to lead you in a word of prayer. If you would, bow your heads, and I want to lead you in prayer tonight. Just repeat after me, dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins, and I turn away from them, and I turn my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son that he died for all of my sins and you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my life and save me. Guide me, lead me, and teach me to live this saved life. Right now, I receive you by faith as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus. For saving me, I give my life to you. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me the overflowing measures. Give me the ability to speak in other tongues and the power to bear witness of you. By faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I have the tongues. And I have the power. Thank you for filling me today, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, I want you to know God saved you from your sins, filled you with his spirit, and he's given you a brand new life in him, his very own life, eternal life. The next thing you should do, if you're not already a member of a good Bible teaching church, I encourage you to find a good Bible teaching church Unite with that church, become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then out of your obedience to him, be baptized. And if you live in 770-89-075-034 or 775-81 zip code, you're close to New Covenant. I encourage you, after the pandemic is over, we go back to corporate worship. Come unite with us. We're a great Bible teaching church, and we'd love to have you as a member of our church family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen. On this coming Sunday is our church's 26th anniversary. We're not going to do an afternoon service. We're not going to have a special guest to come in and preach or anything. But we're going to do everything Sunday morning. I'm going to uh, continue on down the road that I've been on. And unless God tells me to do something different. At the end of the service, however, we are going to take uh, communion. We're going to take it in the morning. Because I know the Super Bowl is going to be on Sunday evening at 6. And y'all ain't going to be watching New Covenant Christian Church. Y'all going to be watching the Super Bowl. So we're going to go ahead on and do uh, communion Saturday. I mean Sunday at, at right at the end of the service. Which will be about 10, maybe a little after 10. So you can go by the church on Saturday from 9 until 10 o'clock. Get your communion packs. Brother Chris will be there. You can drop off your tithe. Your offering, you can drop off your $100 to go into the building fund, and uh, we can do it like that. Amen? Amen. And uh, I do Bishop believe... and I are going to be at the church Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Uh, no, won't be no need, because we're going to do it in the morning. We're going to take every take the... Unless you want to go... We to go pick the offering. Okay, we'll be there, we'll be there at 12, at 12 uh, Sunday. Yeah, 12 o'clock Sunday. Yeah. 12 o'clock Sunday. Yeah, Amen. We're not going to have communion. Yeah, we won't be passing out communion. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, and we'll if you want to come by the church, I'll be by there. I mean, I'll be there. Um, so you can come by. I'll be there from like two. Now, now look, come by from between two to five. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'll be a good window to come. If you come in early, I'm going to be doing my job. Mm -hmm. And I don't need. No distraction, no disturbance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. So, you know, I'm, but I will give you your communion. If you're just in the neighborhood and you just 
after you stop by and you want to get pick up your communion and leave your offering or your tithes, I'll be there. That's tomorrow and Friday. Yeah, tomorrow and Friday. And, and if you, uh, we're going to take up an offering on tonight, you can go to the website, New Covenant Christian Church Houston. Dot com. Go to where it says donate or give a fly and you can uh, give your tithe and your offering on there. Or if you don't have the church app, uh, but you do have an iPhone, iPhone, iPad, Motorola phone or Android phone, you can go to your app store, download the app, set up your giving there where it says donate or give a fly. And you can start giving on the church app. Amen. Amen. Or like Pastor Cheryl said, you can come by the church. Tomorrow, Friday, between 2 or 5 o'clock. 2 and 5 o'clock. Amen? Yeah. I think that's about it, Pastor Cheryl. That's it, baby. Amen. Thank y'all. just wanted to reminisce with you guys. Yes. Some of y'all know the whole story. Hey, yeah, been with us all the time. Uh, shout out to Uncle Zeke, who was the first person to walk the aisles and join the New Covenant Christian Church. I was short and charting them, Sister Hopkins. Sister Hopkins, Sister Pam, my Sister Virginia Harris. Janet. Amen. BJ. BJ. He was two. He was two years old. Isn't that <laughs> okay. so? 28. Uh, what, all right, you guys. God bless y'all. We'll see you all on Sunday. In Love Jesus' you. name. Love y'all.